There are a number of superstar players injured or away from their team right now. Which absence in the Western Conference will affect the standings the most? You know, when I look at this post, I mean, let's talk about the impact that LeBron James and his foot is having on the Los Angeles Lakers because right now, the way AD is playing, it doesn't seem like they need LeBron James much at all. I want to say zero. And this is why I I know that LeBron James – is needed on the floor. I get it. He's the best player overall. I mean, just from the hype alone with who, who he is. But the free-flowing play that the Lakers are experiencing right now with LeBron James not being on the court has is showing up to be a positive return for their wins column right now. I just – and I know that when he comes back, there's going to be some adjustments that they'll need to make and I'm not certain how effective that will be now that we're at the end of the regular season. So, you know, you can take it for whatever it's worth, but the way AD is playing right now lets me know that he can lead a team, right, as long as he stays um, healthy, and that I don't know if LeBron James should hurry back. <laughs> maybe right. just come show up. When they get maybe last week of the regular season, up you know when they get into uh, the playing tournament or you know the, in the playoffs. But one of the things that's going to be a concern for me when he does come back is what will the chemistry look like on the floor and mm-hmm. how free flowing will it be? Will he say, "I don't have to have now that I've won the scoring title, I got it, I got it." Now y'all just get us to the playoffs, get us deep, and then I'll take over there. I mean, I don't know if he's willing to. To, do, to play that role, because if he comes in playing the dominant role, I think it will have a negative impact on the team. I agree with you 100%. You know, LeBron is known for kind of stopping the pace a little bit. And right now you got D'Lo, you got Austin Reeves going off right now. Oh Jared Vanderbilt's playing fantastic. Lots of energy and effort. Dennis Schroeder, like, yeah, just Schroeder. getting it mm-hmm. done. Yeah. Getting it done. And I think when he comes into the game, you'll find them starting to defer to him. Yes. And it just switches up the flow. It doesn't flow as, as smoothly as it has been right now with this new roster and with in how successful they're being in these in this small pocket of, of time. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Not only do the players defer to him, but Coach Ham too. Coach Ham goes out of his way to make sure LeBron is um involved in that offense. But hey, what's happening right now with the Lakers, I'm out is impressive, you know, coming from where they were, right? Stuck at number 13 forever. Now they're flirting at potential uh, number five or six seed in the West, which is impressive. I agree. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now Zion Williamson has been more out than in throughout his entire (laughs) career, but this season, we got this hamstring that's kind of nagging. What do you think about Zion and the Pels who slipped down in the standings quite significantly? Get healthy, stay out. We'll see you next season, Zion. Why even waste your time coming back? Because even if you come back, there's no way. I don't believe that the Pels are going to even get it. If they even make it, if Zion comes back and the Pels then move up to the playing tournament, because that's the furthest they're going to go. Let's just be honest about that. What that mean? Will they make the playoffs? I don't know. I still don't even know. Because, you know, Zion, when he comes back, he's going to need a minute. Oh, yeah. We're talking about hamstring. We're talking about out, having played full games. Zion, stay out. We'll see you next season. No, I we'll see you next season. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with you there, too. And, you know, Zion, you see him on the sidelines at times, and he doesn't even look like he's ready for an NBA court right now. He can't work out with the bad hammy. So that's just what it is. You know, we'll see him next season, hopefully, right? Yeah, absolutely. Pelicans don't even waste your time. Don't mm-hmm. even waste your time. With, don't even waste your time trying to compete. I would say just go ahead and end the season. Still get your reps in. You still want to be a – You still if you're going to do anything, try to see who you cannot – who you can stop from maybe getting a higher seat. Maybe that should be your focus, right? Let me see who we can stop. But that, that's a, it's, a, it's a wrap for the Pelican season, unfortunately. Yeah, it is. We think about Willie Green, though, as a side note. You think Willie Green is safe for next season? He should be. He should be. Yeah, I think Willie is safe as well. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, Kevin Durant's out with an ankle, just like really a freak accident during warm-ups and <laughs> – I mean, they say he's out for three weeks or so, which will Mm -hmm. take us to the end of the regular season. The Suns gutted their entire depth to get KD. They did. Mm -hmm. They did. They gutted their entire depth to get KD. And I think that um, he will be missed on their roster for sure because they gutted their entire um, depth. And 
with doing that, it leaves the uh, sons in some type of hole, and it's it's going to be it's going to require that Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Chris Paul makes things happen, and we've seen what that looks like as of late. So, <laughs> you know, I just I don't know if it'll be enough for the Suns to maintain their spot um, in the Western Conference without KD. And we're talking about a small sample size of KD playing with the three of them, with with the Suns. What, like two games? Mm-hmm. And then game, yeah. and then he he was at game three anticipating the play and couldn't <laughs> even start the game. I said, you know what, KD, poor thing. Yeah, I know that Luka Doncic. You know he. Uh... Used to be a one man show for the Dallas Mavericks, but I think now they have a two man bandit with him and Kyrie. <laughs> Luca is out with a bad thigh, thigh strain. I don't think I've ever heard of this injury, you know, affecting a player like that. What, your quads are sore? Like, what? Get out there and play. Well, yeah, they don't. He doesn't want an injury like Victor Oladipo. Mm. Victor Oladipo tore his whole quad thigh muscle up. You don't want that. So, yeah, go ahead and rest that thigh because, you know, it took Oladipo a minute yeah, to get back. Player. So mm-hmm. I can understand why um, they're being cautious with Luka Doncic and his thigh injury because they don't want it to tear and be like Oladipo. So, yeah. Mm, and that's okay. the superstar. So that's fun. That's kind of how I see it. Okay. Now, Jean Morant, uh, still one of my favorite players. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's currently away from the team. Right now, uh, I think they gave him six games total as some kind of suspension or a time away. Without Jean Morant, I am seeing the leadership skills of Dylan Brooks, and uh, I like what I'm seeing. And and the Memphis Grizzlies have proved that they can win games without Ja anyway. They can hold it down while Ja is out. Absolutely. Will Ja need to show up in the playoffs? Yes. But for right now, they're good. They're good. Even if they do lose a, a game or two while he's out, they are still good based off of their spot in the standings. Even if – because right now I believe as we speak, um, as we're talking, they are number three in the West. I think they can maintain. I think they can maintain while Jaw's out. When he comes back, they'll be fine. I think. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah, well, it's because it's not only Ja, though. It's Brandon Clark and it's also Steven Adams. You know, I wish they could put, like, little pictures of them there as well because they're a big piece, mm. not just Ja. But um, I think what I'm seeing from Dylan Brooks and Desmond Bain and Tyus Jones stepping in nicely in, in Jaws' absence, I think the Grizz can definitely hold on. Two or three is fine. You know, yeah. home court advantage, yeah. going into the playoffs, holding it down until Ja gets back because they do need them if they're going to go absolutely. Uh, make some noise in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I agree. So looking at this list, I mean, which absence, which absence will affect the Western Conference standings the most? It's tight. It is tight. The West is so tight that it is really hard to uh, make a decision, but I'm going to go with Kevin Durant. I'm going with Kevin Durant because the Suns are in a precarious position considering that they gutted, as we mentioned earlier, their their depth, really solid role players. Mm. Mikkel Bridges and Cam Johnson, Mm -hmm. solid role players. And without Kevin Durant playing right now, who can they defer to, right? And I'm not saying that Booker is not – enough. I'm not saying that DeAndre Ayton is not enough. I'm not saying that Chris Paul is not enough. I'm just saying that Kevin Durant makes it all the better. So without him being there, I think it does put a strain. And they may find themselves outside of a solid playing spot during the time that Kevin Durant is out. If we think about it, if he's going to be out eight to ten games, we're oh, two to three weeks, when you think about it, it's not a long time. But within that time frame, the number of games that could potentially, that will be played and he not be there, it's huge to their standing considering that the West is so tight between, um, uh, what, four, five through 13, 14. Anything can change. And so they cannot go on a losing streak the Suns and think they're going to be able to maintain a solid top six spot. It's just not possible. So that's what I think. That's why I think that his absence is, has the biggest impact on, on the standings and that the Suns can find themselves in a playing tournament position. And I know they don't want to be there. No, not at all. Now, if, if Kate and now if this had happened earlier in the season, I would say, Oh, mm-hmm. it's fine. I wouldn't oh, be yeah. worried about it. Mm-mm. Uh-huh. Mm-mm. But when you have less than 15 games left, it's crucial. It's crucial. Yep. Yep. Actually, you know what? The player that I think will have the biggest impact on the Western Conference standings is not even on this list. Ooh. It's Andrew Wiggins. 
Andrew Wiggins has not been with the Golden State Warriors since February the 13th. It was his last game, dropped 29 points. Away from the team right now for family reasons. We don't know if or when he'll ever come back. I think Andrew Wiggins is the biggest absence that was going to be felt. The Warriors right now are just barely holding on to a top six top six spot as we as we speak. And we know they're a horrible away team right now. Cannot win a game in another team's arena. I don't know what's going on in the world to say words, but I think there should have been an edit here to show Andrew Wiggins as a huge impact to the Western Conference standings, and in particular, the Golden State Warriors. Mm.